cold calling could actually be hurting you and your real estate business and your chances of ever getting a deal done if you're just trying to get your first deal completed. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the seven reasons why I believe that if you are cold calling today, then not only are you facing an uphill battle, but it's only going to get even more difficult for you to have success as a real estate investor and a wholesaler. And that's because of number one, let's talk about reason number one, is that the majority of the time when you are cold calling, and if it's just you on your phone, this may not be immediately the case, but you could have problems very soon even with your phone. I'll explain to you why, because I had one of my clients actually uh, express this issue to me. But generally, if you're doing cold calling, then what you're doing, and I'm here in my backyard, it's a rainy day, uh, if you're doing cold calling, you're going to be uh, using any sort of phone system that um, you're buying phone numbers for and you're trying to dial, you know, that phone system it allows you to dial multiple numbers at the same time or with a lot of speed so that you can get through a lot of numbers because with cold calling, it's, it's a sheer numbers game and you, got, you need a lot of records and a lot of phone numbers and a lot of dials. But very quickly, you'll realize that those numbers get flagged the spam likely. And then all of a sudden now you have an issue that you're calling these people and they're not going to pick up the phone because any time that you get a call and you tell me, because I experienced the same thing, I got a call that says spam likely, I, I know that it's a telemarketer. I'm not going to pick up the phone. So then now you end up then having to get more numbers. And so then you get into this cat and mouse game of constantly recycling phone numbers because you're trying to avoid that spam likely. And then the issue is that you, not every carrier is the same. So that means that you could be good on one carrier like AT&T, but bad on another one. And now, you know, it becomes really, really problematic. In addition to that, if you're just using your phone, you're saying, well, you know, I'm just going to use my personal cell phone in order to make cold calls in order to avoid this issue. I recently had a client in my uh, partner program. We, we don't do cold calling. We, we get all inbound leads. But, you know, he's using his phone for making outbound calls, and he said he couldn't use it because he was doing cold calling before with his personal cell phone, and now that phone number has been flagged as spam likely, and now he can't call anyone. So think about how much of a pain that would be if your personal cell phone number was flagged. So that means that you know when you call buyers, they say you're trying to sell your deal, and you're trying to you know make a call to uh, an actual cash buyer, then they're going to think you're spam likely. So it just becomes very problematic. Let's talk about uh, list num uh, item number two, which is that you know the majority of uh, the, item number two is that the majority of people are on a do not call list, and more and more Americans are putting themselves on a do not call list, which means that now when you scrub your list of hot prospects or prospects that you think are really high likely to sell their property at a discount from whatever list provider, then a, a larger and larger percentage of those prospects are going to be on the do not call list. Now you have the option of ignoring that do not call list, but that's a bad idea because then you could potentially face a lawsuit uh, from someone that, and, and there's so many stories, you can look them up, where people are out there just waiting, waiting for you to cold call them because they that's how they make their living. They make their living by, by just waiting on people to call them uh, when they're on the do not call list and then they're going to send you a nice little letter from their attorney. And then they're going to ask you for 15, 20 grand. Or they're going to sue you. And in the end, you're going to go ahead and have to pay that money. And so now, whatever money you had for your business, uh, you're not going to have any more. So you, you have to think about the risk associated with uh, being, uh, you know, calling somebody on that do not call list. But also the fact that that greatly diminishes uh, the prospects that you're going to be able to call. Uh, number four is... That, you know, the, the excuse me, number, uh, that was number, number three. Let's go to number three. Is that, you know, cold calling is very time intensive and inefficient. Think about it. If, if you want a certain number of leads on a per day basis, right? And, and this real estate business is all about lead flow. The more leads you have, the better chance you have of putting a deal together. You know, you're in a situation where now, you know, you have to sit. If, if, if it's just you on your phone and your phone on your cell phone, it's going to take hours and hours and hours of, of calling just to get a handful of people on the phone and to be able to, you know, get a few leads here or there. 
And so it's very time consuming. It's, it's very inefficient. You think about it as you know, very laborious. So, you know, could you be, you know, you could spend an hour, two hours on the phone dialing people and only get a handful of people on the phone. And so it's, it's a fairly inefficient process, especially with the way things are with technology and the internet. And so that's the issue, number one. Uh, and also along with that time consuming and efficiency comes the mental um, kind of draining aspect of just sitting there day after day after day and making outbound cold calls. So it's generally not good for uh, time efficiency and, and, uh, and, and, and as well as your, your mental uh, state of mind, right? Uh, the next one, number four, is the fact that it's very high rejection rate. So think about it is that, you know, you're really an annoying pest with these people. As you're uh, calling them, you know, number one is that if they see that it's a spam likely and they happen to pick up the phone, then now they're somewhat combated because they don't know who you are, why you call them, you're calling them out of the blue. People have, you know, uh, uh, their guard up nowadays because of all the scams that are happening online. And so, you know, they don't really trust you. They're going to ask you a bunch of questions. So you, you have to overcome so many obstacles in the beginning of that conversation before you even get to a conversation about their property, which means that then now, you know, from a sales perspective, your sales ability has to be much greater, much greater than an incoming lead. Uh, your, uh, your phone conversations need to be much longer. You're going to have to probably spend hours on the phone with a prospect by the time all said and done. Why? Because you've had to spend so much time in the front end trying to get them to feel comfortable talking with you, trying to make sure that they feel that you're legitimate to then get into the property uh, and the circumstances surrounding why they want to sell uh, to get there. So just, you know, it, it's just very, you know, like you're just an annoying pest as, as opposed to being a welcome guest. What we do online lead generation for our uh, business, so we have prospects that raise their hands and fill out a form because they saw an ad on either TikTok, on Google, on Google or on Facebook. And so then now when we call them, they're expecting our call. And so it's just a much different conversation. And again, going back to the previous point, you know, the high rejection uh, of the cold calling, uh, you know, just places a, a, mental, um, a mental toll on you. Uh, let's talk about number five. You know, if you, it's an ineffective method, really, if you think about it, in, a, in the age of digital marketing. I mean, we're in 2024, uh, middle of 2024. Uh, everyone is used to dealing with, uh, with businesses in a different way nowadays. Um, and I think that cold calling ignores this particular trend. You know, um, when, we, when we run ads and we, people are communicating with us in that way, meaning they see something online, they fill out their information, uh, as with any other service that they're, you know, if they're going to go out and get health insurance, they'll go to a website, fill in their information, somebody will reach out to them. If they want to get, you know, uh, they wanna, they're interested about a particular service from a company, they will reach out to them and then that company will call them back. And so they're used to doing things that way. Now you're trying to go up, you know, you're trying to go upstream. You're trying to approach them in a way that they're not used to dealing with. You know, and, and, and again, it comes back to that annoying pest. You're now that person that is interrupting their lives and then they didn't even ask for help and they're not ready perhaps to even in, in, involve themselves in that conversation about the property. So it just puts them in a much different, it, it's, a, uh, it, it's a friction, right? That you're, it, it's a friction, it's a process that is, uh, that has a lot of friction inside of it, just because that's not the way that people are used to dealing with things nowadays, you know? And, and so that's the other part of it is that you're going against the trend. Uh, diminishing returns, you know, as more and more real estate investors have gone into cold calling and generally when a real estate investor or wholesaler attempts cold calling and they're looking to do cold calling in their local area, they're all targeting the same list. They're all targeting a tax delinquent list or they're targeting an absentee owner list. And those lists are finite. If you've ever done any cold calling, you'd, you know this to be the case. And I'm not trying to convince you. You know this that many times you'll call a seller and they'll tell you, oh, you're the fifth or sixth person that has called me already. And so now, not only are you in a situation where you're an annoying pest, 
not only are you coming in with a bad mindset because you're spending all day cold calling, but now they're telling you, oh, you're like one of those guys. I've gotten like five calls already this week. I had four of you guys call me last week. Yeah, why don't you make me an offer and see what I... So already, like that whole conversation is, is just starting off on the wrong foot. And, um, and again, it just makes it harder for you to get traction in this business if you are pushing up against this sort of resistance. Then the last but not least, number seven, is difficulty in scaling. You know, uh, cold calling, as I mentioned before, it's labor intensive, right? So, you know, um, if you want to, let's say that you do get a deal or two with cold calling and you want to now get more deals, what are you going to do? Are you going to spend more time on the phone? That has a limit. That has a limit both on you mentally, but also from a time perspective. You can only you only have so many hours in the day. Then, then that means that then what's the next step? Well, now you have to go out and hire cold callers and and and, and hire and either you're going to hire or manage them, or you're going to pay a company to manage them. You're going to have to get more records. You're going to skip trace. You're going to have to then manage all those lists and make sure that you're recycling them every so often. So there's a whole slew of things that need to happen for you to scale that operation. And I say this all the time, we, we do online marketing. So for us, if we're running a campaign, which you can start off with as little as $20 a day or start off, you know, you know, or do like 50 or 75 or even more. But let's suppose I was doing a budget of $25 a day and I've done a couple of deals and now I'm ready to scale that campaign. All it takes is for me to go into my computer, change the number from 25 to 45 or to 50 or to 75, and I've effectively doubled or tripled the amount of leads I'm going to get by just simply changing a number and nothing else has changed. Whereas with cold calling, it's a certainly a, a lot more difficult process to, to scale. But also keep in mind is that you also would be scaling your problem. So whatever problems you're having yourself on cold calling with regards to spam likely, with regards to the friction and everything else, now that is scaled. Because now if you have three or four cold callers, now they have those potential issues, which now you have to manage them. So it's a whole slew of problems. So I just want to make sure that you understand what you're getting into. Perhaps you're already experiencing these problems. And if you're interested in a different model, what I consider to be the ultimate lifestyle business, then you should check out the video that appears somewhere here. That is a full-blown mini course on exactly our model of how to go out and generate motivated sellers online, how to do deals nationwide, and then you can finally stop cold calling and make this business enjoyable and make a ton of money. So make sure you watch those videos.